Welcome back to Aussie Beekeeping. So today I'm going to show you how I build a Kenyan top bar hive from start to finish. Let's get into it. Four components to a top bar hive bottom. They are the follower board, which is the angled piece. It's also used to manufacture the hive. There are the ends, and the ends are basically just to close up the end of the hive and allow some connection for the legs. The bottom, the bottom is a single piece which has got an angled cut on each side and it fits into the hive and seals the bottom off and also the sides. The sides are the only parts that you can really change the dimensions on. If you want the hive to be a small nuke sized hive, make those six or seven inches, so 200 millimetres across and allow for three or four frames. So let's get into manufacturing this hive and their components. The first component we're going to build is the follower board. And the follower board is 460 millimetres across and it's about 240 millimetres high. And what I've done to create the angle is I've come in 110 millimetres or 4.33 inches. Now I know inches don't have decimals, but I had no way of working that out. So the angle's 110 millimetres each side in from the 460. The reason these are 460 millimetres across is because they match the Langstroth frames. I also build the top bars the same width, so I can use the top bars in a standard hive to generate comb or to even pinch bees. And as you can see, they're exactly the same length to the millimetre. So we'll cut these angles off this follower board. Now be careful when using a saw, they can be quite dangerous. Trimming the two end pieces, which can be anywhere up from 460 millimetres wide. I'm making mine exactly 460, just to cut down on space and overall dimensions of the hive. You can use the follower board to mark on the ends so that when you go to nail on your sides, you know where they go. I didn't, as there was a couple of imperfections in the timber and I ended up turning them over. You cut the follower board wrong at the start of this video. I took 20 millimeters off the bottom. When you're building it, don't take 20 millimeters off the bottom and you'll see why. So here I'm marking 1.2 metres. So this is the overall internal length of the hive. Cut that one off. Again, be quite safe when you use these saws. I can tell you from experience, they can cut. Now we use the follower board to set the saw angle. That's the top of the follower board at the top of the screen. And the angle going down the side is the side of the follower board the saw to cut down the length of the bottom board. This creates an angle that you can nail to and it sits really nicely between the two sides. You'll see a bit further on but as you can see here there's an angle on one side and there's an angle on the other side and this piece matches up to the follower board. You can finally see it taking some sort of shape. Now that we've got all our components cut, we can put it together. Now because this deck is a bit uneven, I'm using a piece of timber underneath and I centralise 
the bottom board with the end board and I tack nail it in. Now in this video you'll notice that I don't actually screw anything together and that's only because I don't have any screws. My plan is that I will screw it together prior to treating it. Now on the other end of the bottom board I've tacked on the other end board. Then we slide in the sides which are 1.2 meters as well and we put a tack nail in there just to put them in place. If you want you can use your end board, your follower board I should say, just to gauge the angles and as a template. Now the bottom of the side board just comes up five or ten millimeters from the corner or the side of the bottom board. This gives you maximum height without having any of, the, any of the side boards hanging down below the bottom board. Again, you can check it to make sure that it's right. And once it's in place, pop a couple of tack nails in, or if you'd like, screw it in straight away. I like to tack nail things, that way I can always move them around if need be. Now I've tack nailed the other end, And just to check, all the clearances look pretty good. It's pretty tight. And to be honest, it doesn't matter if it's not very tight because the bees will just fill those little gaps with propolis. Now you see here, if there's any bits that look like there's a bit of a gap, you can use the board just to tap that around until it's in the right spot and re-nail it. That way you get a perfect fit of that follower board right down the hive. So here I am just tack nailing a couple of other little bits and pieces and now you can see the bottom boards in place and then we tack nail the bottom board through the side boards just for peace of mind. Basically everywhere you see a nail or next to you should have a screw. You want to screw this thing together at about 150 millimeter spacings, which is maybe about six inches apart, and use some good screws, 50, even 60 millimeter screws that are countersunk, and that'll give you great attachment. Doesn't look too bad, does it? You can do this at home very easily. And you can see here how the top bars align with the rest of the hive. Now, to cut the follower board, all you do is you place it inside the hive, describe a mark underneath the top bar and cut that off. And once that's cut off, you want to nail it centrally to the piece above. You can do this by holding the piece in line, putting a couple of marks there, and then tacking it off. And again, Always screw these pieces together. And look at that, the follower board. Don't be too concerned if there's a couple of gaps here and there. Now to mark the holes. With this hive, I'm going to have double entrances. So we mark that with a piece of timber so that it, we don't drill into the bottom board. And I'm gonna put three holes because my previous hives worked quite well with three holes. If you want to, you can always put a cork in to block them up, but I don't think it's needed. Now for the legs. Now I've used pieces of timber here that are about 70 by 35. You mark those on angle, cut them at all the same length. These are about 950 millimeters long. And then you hold them to where you think they're gonna go on the side of the hive. Don't be too concerned, it doesn't really matter if they're a little bit out, you can always move them and then tack them on. Now what I do is I try not to have the legs go up any higher than about halfway from the end board. That way if I want the hive to have a lid, the lid will sit above the top of the legs. 
So once they're tacked on, you can see here it sits quite well on the ground. Now we're going to mark for some screws. I've used screws in all my top bar hives and they've been fine. If you want, you can put bolts through there. There's nothing wrong with that. So I put the screws through the 20 millimeter timber into the legs, one inside the hive and also one outside the hive. These will hold a fair bit of weight. You can see here the position. I've also cut another little off cut with an angle and I'll tack that on as a ledge. What I'll end up doing with this hive is I'll make a couple of more follower boards. But let's put this hive together. So here's a top bar. If they don't fit, you can just break off the wax. The bees will easily fix that and make that into perfect comb in no time. So your top bars sit on top of the box. I'm going to start this hive out just with four or five frames, almost like a nuke. And then over time, I'll add more frames. And the follower board just butts hard up against those. Now these top bars are 42 millimetres across and 19 millimetres thick. And all the timber I've used is all 20 millimetre thick pine. So you can see inside, doesn't look too bad. Now if you've got a couple of small gaps like that, don't be too concerned because the bees will very quickly propolize that all up. So now we've got the box built, I think it's time we build the lid. So the lid is basically a piece of 240 millimeter timber, 240 by 20 millimeters, and I've made it the total width of the hive plus whatever timber you want to put around the outside. In this case, I've added 90 millimeters. Now I've marked the center and I've marked an angle and that's going to be the slope of our roof. So once they're cut and I've cut three pieces at 1.2 meters plus 50 millimeters just to give us some good clearance, I tack those together. Then I'll put a screw in each one and this will make this permanent. These screws are great for structural work, but they're not good for holding together two pieces of 20 millimeter timber. Then I tack in the top center piece, which will make up the ridge. Don't mind the missed nail and a screw there as well. And now we'll do the same thing on the other end. Now, if you're thinking about the length of these pieces of timber, the long pieces are the total length of the hive, outside to outside, plus a small tolerance, so that if the timber swells, the lid doesn't get jammed. You can test fit this, measure it, do it whichever way you want to go. But as I said, don't be too concerned, it's relatively easy. Now the lid fits over the top of the whole hive and I put a couple of screws to make the lid sit level and in the right spot. Then I get a piece of timber and I tack it underneath the lid and that will be the permanent support for the lid. It's nice and level. Now these nails are 50 millimetres so they're a bit long so I'm putting them on an angle. This will get screwed as well. Take the screws out and I've done the same thing the other end and there you go we have a roof now I've got some offcuts of tin and I'm going to make these a little bit longer than they need to be I was planning on making them 500 millimeters long but in the end they became a lot longer and I thought you know what give shade and protection from the elements to the bees so you just screw these on trying to make them nice and straight you screw through the bottom piece of timber and you screw through the top piece of timber. That gives you all the support you need for this small lid. 
it might flap around a bit. If you want to put some more screws in, you can, but I'm not too worried. We're almost to the end. So this piece of tim goes straight back on. Another piece. Line up the other piece with the end and then make sure you get the overlap really nice as well. Few more screws and we're almost there. Just make sure you go through the timber. If it takes a bit longer, that's fine. You don't want to miss the timber and end up putting a hole where the water is going to drip into the hive. These screws have got a neoprene washer on them which compresses when you screw them in which makes the join, sorry, makes the hole waterproof. Okay, looking like a top bar hive, isn't it? The only thing we need to do is add a small flashing to the top to stop the water getting in. I probably would have liked this to be a little bit wider on each side, but it was all I had laying around. I'm in the building industry, so I get a few bits and pieces. Now, we screw that on, making sure it's nice and tight. This one comes with plastic from the factory, so we'll get rid of that. And then I just dot some screws, just equal to the screws that are down the bottom, holding the pin on. Put some screws in there, and it's almost complete. I just had to cut the end off that piece, just to make it the right length, and there you go. This lid is easy to lift off and put back on, need a little bit of jiggling to get it in the right spot but it's easy to grab with a pair of gloves have it guys fully assembled ready to use apart from the screws kenyan top bar hive i hope you've enjoyed this video i love making it and good luck with your top bar hive if you like our videos subscribe like share and comment see you on the next one